Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. Today we are talking about buying like a pro. If you're getting ready to purchase sheep or goats or lambs or goat kids or any livestock for that matter, you are definitely going to want to check this out. Right, so the very first thing we need to talk about is stop asking for cheap animals for goodness sakes i see this online all the time people call our farm and they're like hey i'm looking for a cheap animal and my response to them is always we don't sell cheap animals if you want cheap animals which you shouldn't um, go to the sale barn go to facebook go to craigslist um, and even on there you may not necessarily find them i'm not knocking facebook or craigslist i'm just saying like don't call a breeder and be like, hey, I'm looking for a cheap animal. Uh, I see people put that online all the time. What we see as breeders when you put online looking for a cheap animal is you saying, um, I can't afford an animal. And then my mind goes to, if you can't afford to buy an animal, then how exactly are you going to afford to, um, if you can't afford to buy an animal, how exactly do you plan on affording to eat it? Um, so as we move forward, uh in this video series this uh like a pro series we're going to get to feed like a pro too and you know that's an issue that we run into is people buy animals and then they can't afford to feed them you know here at lanessa farms we offer a six month health warranty um it is a huge turnoff to us and to most breeders that i know when we get customers that call and they're like hey i want a cheap animal just stop doing that look cheap is not the answer you can look for a value you can look for a bargain, um, but don't say cheap. Like it's just, you're sending the wrong message. You know, there are plenty of breeders that you can call and you can be honest with them and you can say, hey, I'm just starting out. I'm just getting going. I want a good quality animal. I want the best quality animal that I can afford. Here's my price range and here's what I can afford. What do you have or what can you do to help me out? And man, we will work with you all day long. We will work with you all day long. But if you just call me up and you're like, I want some junk. Um, I want the cheapest thing you got. I don't even understand what you, why? Like, what's the goal here? Um, because if you pay junk and you want junk, that's exactly what you're gonna get. You're gonna get junk. So with that being said, get that out of your head that you need to get the cheapest animal. And that brings up a couple other points. Don't buy breeding stock at the sale barn. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust on the sale barns here a little bit, and I know some people are gonna get their feelings hurt, but look, we sell to the sale barn. We sell animals for meat to the sale barn. Those are animals that we are getting rid of that we have decided that are not breeding prospects, and we wanna get rid of to the sale barn so individuals uh, can eat them. I don't ever send anything of any breeding quality to the sale barn. Most other large producers or professional producers that I know of do not do that either. It is just not the way things work. If they're worth their weight for breeding, usually we'll sell them to someone. Uh, if you're going to the sale barn, just assume that you're getting something that, that there's wrong with them. And we're gonna kind of reflect back on that here in a minute uh, when we get a little further along. Uh, bottle babies, there's this obsession with bottle babies. People are like, well, I, I can, I'm gonna save all this money by getting a bottle baby. You know, why? do you want a bottle baby uh, if if i tell you that you're not going to save any money by money by buying a bottle baby and you still want one then i really need to know why because here's the here's the unfortunate truth that you need to embrace and realize about bottle babies there was either something wrong with the baby or there was something wrong with the mom i could elaborate that on that but just let that sink in if you're buying a bottle baby there was something wrong with the baby or there was something wrong with the mom either way this is not something that you want for breeding stock. Um, bottle babies are never as healthy. Uh, they generally grow slower. We tend to have issues with them. They tend to make worse parents. Stay away from the bottle babies. I understand that they're cute and they're cuddly and all that stuff, but it is not what you want. And again, we're gonna move on to the cute and cuddly here. And our next point, which is stop impulse buying. All right, so this brings us to point number two stop impulse buying what do i mean by impulse buying i mean you need to do your research and you need to decide what you want before you start shopping do not get in the car and just head over to somebody's farm without having any idea of what it is that you want and just start buying animals 
You need to look at breeds. You need to look at what works and what doesn't for you and for your farm. And you need to have a plan before you head out to somebody's farm and before you start purchasing. With that being said, with the impulse buying, stop buying the cute animal. We understand that, you know, oh, they're adorable and they're cute and cuddly. Cute and cuddly doesn't last very long when it comes to the sheep and goat industry. Uh, you just, you have to look at it for what it is. You know, a lot of times the cute and cuddly one is the runt. It, we have videos about confirmation. You can look at confirmation videos right here. Um, and it'll tell you a lot more about what it is that you're looking for. But the cute and cuddly one is more than likely not the answer for you. So that's something that you most definitely need to keep in mind. Um, a little side note on the impulse buying uh, is really do stick with, with what it is that, that you want to buy. You may see some like off the wall stuff posted online about how you know there's this magic breed that you've never heard of that somehow is the best breed ever. <sighs> you know, if it if you go to the breeding association websites for almost any breed, I hate to break it to you, but they're pretty much all going to tell you that their breed is the best breed. So you really need to get to some uh information get your hands on some information or better yet talk to somebody that's raised that breed that you're thinking about breeding and find out you know what is this breed all about what are their positive traits what are their negative traits there's going to be a negative associated with almost every breed that you're going to have to learn to deal with um, a lot of people tend to get really hung up on the idea of of wool they're like oh, i just can't have wool breeds because i don't want to shear Shearing's dirt cheap. You can find people all over the United States to shear for you for about $5 a head. If you really like that sheep, but it just happens to be a wool sheep, just get over it and buy the darn sheep. Uh, you don't have to sacrifice all kinds of stuff just so you get a hair sheep that you don't have to, that you don't have to shear. So with that being said, let's move on forward to point number three when it comes to buying sheep and goats. All right, so point number three is you got to inspect the animal and we've got lots and lots of videos. I'm going to include one right here about inspecting the animal. And this is what we don't like about um, buying from non reputable breeders or buying at the sale barn is there's no way for you to know exactly what it is that you're getting. Now we can go through the nuts and bolts of inspection of the animal itself. Um, and uh, we've already been over that talking about checking the mouth, checking the teeth structure, checking the way they walk and the way they move and all of those things. But it's really, really important, if, especially if you're going to be buying breeding stock, is you need to go to the breeder. You need to look at the parents. You need to look at the facility that they're coming from and you, you need to make a judgment call for yourself. Is this breeder reliable or are they not? Is this someone that you're going to be able to go back to um, or is this someone that you're probably never going to see again a day in your life? Uh, it's nice to establish a relationship with a breeder and be able to go back to them uh, if you have questions, comments, or concerns later on down the road. Uh, the other nice thing about a breeder is, is if you decide you want to continue breeding uh, that specific line of, of sheep or goats, you can go back to them and you already know what pedigree you're getting and you can compare it with future purchases that you may want to make. So, you know, when we're at the breeder, uh, the other benefit is, is that you can find out what you're getting as far as if you're getting a single, a twin, a triplet, because we've talked about that before uh, when it comes to how to get more uh, bang for your buck, how to get more numbers out of your use. And knowing if you're getting a single, a twin, or a triplet is, is very, very important. So that kind of segues into our next point, uh, our next couple of points, which is uh, some of you are very obsessed with the idea that you need to get registered livestock. Um, you don't need to get registered livestock. Registered livestock does not equate to better quality livestock. Um, and that's something that you most definitely need to get over. Some of the largest producers in the United States, some of the best producers, even of club lambs in the United States, don't necessarily um, raise uh, all registered livestock. It's nice to be able to sell registered livestock, um, but if the price point is going to make or break you based off of registered versus non-registered. I just want you to understand that 
registered does not by any way, shape, or form mean that you're going to get better quality. Um, and so that's important. You can still get pedigree. You can still get everything that you need to get without getting registered livestock. Now, I understand, especially in the goat world, uh, a lot of times if you're going to show these animals, you got to have a piece of paper. And if you got to have a piece of paper, you got to have a piece of paper. And there's not a whole lot I can do to help you out there. Um, and so that's just something that you're going to have to deal with and you're going to have to bite the bullet. Um, but it is, it is important. So I believe that's four points. Is that four points there, camera person? I think that's four points. It, so let's give you a bonus one. Let's give you a five. The fifth point and this is something that a lot of people don't think about is you can't just buy one. You got to get at least two. And I don't mean like your pet dog or your kitty cat or your horse or your whatever is going to be this sheep or goat's buddy. I mean, they need to have another one of them. And some people are going to beat me up on this. They're going to be like, well, you can get a goat and keep it with a sheep or you can get a, 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 you know, a goat and keep it with a horse or whatever. Mental health wise, these are pack animals and they are wired hard that way to function that way. And you are going to have the best possible outcome. You're not going to deal with depression. You're not going to deal with uh, chewing issues, all kinds of other issues that you can deal with um, if you get two of the same uh, breed or type of animal. Uh, I should say species of animal. So if you're going to get one sheep, plan on getting two. If you're going to get one goat, plan on getting two. Very, very important. Um, the other thing to consider is, is if you have uh, an old bully around the house that maybe a little crotchety and has been there, and you know if you do or not, um, keep that in mind. Don't bring home an animal all by itself and have it get the snot beat out of it uh, by that old grouchy goat or old grouchy you that you have sitting around the house. Um, so with that being said, as we move forward through the series, we're going to be covering really cool topics that I think you'll be excited about. Um, how to keep records like a pro, how to feed like a pro, how to sell like a pro. And we're going to get a lot of different input from a lot of different people in the uh, in our region and in the show circuit and other things as well. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out most of all on Facebook at uh, Lanessa Farms TAC Box. That's kind of our group uh, that we have now, and it's kind of an open forum for those of you that like to ask questions, and this allows you to ask questions and get feedback from lots and lots of different people instead of just getting feedback directly from me. With that being said, we're going to call it a day. Thanks for joining us again today. And again, I'm Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty in Heirloom Livestock. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.